So I don't really know what the theme is today other than like good vibes and definitely my definition of good vibes because some of them are not as wholesome. I At least I don't think they'll be as wholesome to other people. But I find satisfaction in these stories. All right. I'm done with it. Okay. I figured after the holidays, um, I posted on Instagram and I was like, are you feeling good, vibing, or are you over it and feeling blah? And like er, like a majority were feeling blah. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, the holidays are a lot. So coming at you with a nice little pick-me-up episode, setting us up for the new year and good, good vibes. Let's do it. Okay, let's dive in. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Two Hot Takes. I'm your host, Morgan. I'm Justin. I don't know what one I want to start off with. I'm using my phone because I have no Wi-Fi up here, so uh, it's going to be a challenge. I think I'll start off with the one that I started a theme, and it's I'll do a full-length episode on it too, but it's a theme I called Hopeless Romantics, and just like the super cute love does exist trend. So All right. I'll start off with this story first. Today I fucked up by jumping into a lake in my bra slash panties to save a man that turned out to be an elite military scuba diver in training. I'm couch surfing with my sister and her boyfriend. I work for him at the lakeside bar trying to pay for college. My state is quote open. And while I'm not thrilled, I need both the job and my scored sofa accommodation to make it work. To give them their space and myself a break from the doom scrolling, I take a run by the lake in the mornings. This lake is bombass and bombass. Let's see. This lake is bombass. Oh yeah. <laughs> this lake is bombass and draws scuba divers to the flooded town at the bottom. Today, I was in my own head running when a dark mass floated to the surface 40 feet away. I was on the craggy side of the lake, and this dude looked dead. D-E-A-D. Facing away from me, his head was tipped back, eyes closed, bobbing like a fishing lure. No one else was around, so I thought he was quantum crazy out here scuba diving alone at the crack ass of dawn, giving himself the bends or some nonsense. Like a jackass, I didn't yell at him to check in. Instead, I took off my shoes and stripped my skivvies to save the imbecile. The movie trailer in my head had me taking three glorious steps and launching into the deep blue water, Black Widow style. Instead, my tender feet hit the sharp rocks and I contorted under the pain like a slinky as I uncoordinatedly pitched myself into the water doing a side flop. I was also wearing my contacts, so I swam hard in his direction with my eyes closed. When I opened them, he was dead ass staring at me like I lost my ever loving mind. And Ugh. so I blurted, Are you okay? He removed the regulator and incredulously said, Yes. <laughs> my brain blue screened while I tread water. The lake felt infinitely deep. Before I could terrify myself by hearing the Jaws theme song, I turned to nope the hell out of there, yelling over my shoulder, I thought you needed saving, to explain my idiocracy. As I pivoted, another dude cleared his throat from 30 feet away on the other side. I never heard a sound from him, so I freaked out, failing and belting an ear-wounding scream at him. (laughs) Both asshats laughed as a few more heads surfaced around us. I was surrounded by divers, all wildly entertained by my ridiculous high-octane fuck-up. After pointing to me and the beach, the merman that was my original target cautiously swam towards me after I nodded and escorted me to the shore. Mm. The beach was much further than I had anticipated, so I was trying to low-key breathe, hiding my need to suck all of the O2 from the air. Also, the comedy of the situation consumed me, and I started to giggle. Finally, I joked, dude, you're lucky you weren't actually dying because it would have taken everything I have to drag your sorry ass this far. He chuckled before offering me a tow. (laughs) Hell no, not going to happen. Even if I had a dog paddle, I wouldn't openly accept that defeat. He quietly mocked me the rest of the way to the shore. I'm a secret sap for it. They were cadets or recent graduates from a military college here for the summer. 
They've been training in pools and were doing some open water exercises. They had been out there at least part of the night. I'm sure I blew up whatever drill they were running. He's training for pre-dive school. And since I'm an expert Googler, I'm guessing that means combat diving. At the shore, I did my best to throw my shoulders back and march out of the water in my sports bra and undies in front of what I can only imagine are some pretty badass men. I did invite him and his Cladistine crew for an absurdly overpriced beer at the bar tonight before shame jogging back into the woods for my clothes. That's it? That's the story, but uh, there's there's edits and updates. Okay. Yeah, I just I just keep picturing everyone coming up in a circle around you. Oh my God, yeah, they're probably like, <laughs> laughing their asses off. Well, just think like you're down there diving, looking out for, you know, whatever sea life, and then all of a sudden you just see this person come out. What did she jump off of in the beginning? I think she just walked in from the shore because it sounded like she stepped on a bunch of rocks and oh, stuff. Oh, God, I was picturing her jumping off some kind of ledge. Like a dock or something? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think she just, like, walked in. Wow. Okay. I mean, I respect the um, just the quick decision to get your ass out there and do something. Yeah. Because I think it's better to do something and have it not Make. be needed than not do it and have it be needed. Exactly. So I don't know. She's pretty badass too, just for like going for it. I know. She really went she for it. Like, just bra and underwear too. Badass. So edit. It's Lake Jocasi in South Carolina. Also, the merman cheated. He was wearing a floaty vest and fins. That bastard. <laughs> okay, I'll admit. There is a part of me that is attracted to his mysterious appearance from the shadow realm, and I'm definitely imagining that he's constructed from some kind of aluminum steel alloy, but he was also funny and kind. I was vibing with his proclivity for witty and sarcastic comments and have a million questions I want to ask him. Ha. Huh. That's funny. Edit two. Okay, at work now and had to turn off the notifications because you snipers are blowing me up. To all the ladies giving advice earlier, yes, I left the dragonflies at home and went full cute sundress and Jesus sandals. Tried to wear my hair straight, but it's hot as hell out here and it'll be beach wave sweaty before long. My sister's boyfriend has blabbed the whole thing and all of the staff is on full on ribbing mode. Hmm. Kind of great actually. They are currently reading the Reddit post, so they are cackling at you people too. So even if he doesn't show, we're going to have a great night. We have a long way to go since it's just the dinner crowd, but thanks for making my day great people. Edit three. Solid dinner crowd, but no merman or fog or frog prince, as you people have started to call him. Our lakeside drinking crew will start rolling in in another one to two hours. I thought you salty bastards of today I fucked up would chew me up and spit me out, but look at you all showing up in the name of love. You guys are awesome. Even if I get ditched, it'll be worth the day with you. Edit four, one hour later, still no show. Oh. Edit five, he showed. Oh, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I <laughs> felt like that was coming. <laughs> Holy shit, a little bit ago. Yes, I was as dorky as you would have imagined, and now I'm typing this from the bathroom like a dumbass again. Sorry, this is like the earliest episode we've ever recorded, and I'm going to keep yawning until, Certain I, records. until I get through my coffee. So sorry that I continuously interrupt uh, the stories with my yawns. Uh, da -da -ba -da -ba. Yes, I was as dorky as you would have imagined, and now I'm typing this from the bathroom like a dumbass again. But I feel like you people are on the ride with me. He's handsome and funny, and he smells great. Yes, I hugged him. I'm Southern. It's what we do. Not the smelling, the hugging. He's nice and smart and keeps defending me from my jackass friends at the bar who have almost called him merman to his face. I think he low-key likes that everyone knew who he was, but not sure how he'll feel about being a Reddit celebrity. I've learned a lot about him, but it wouldn't be fair to share without his permission. His whole crew did not come, only one, and his bud immediately started flirting with my coworker. That's a good sign. I think, holy shit, you'd think I'd never met with a guy before. Also, my friend straight up asked him if he saw my, quote, dragonfly undies that look like penises with massive glow-in-the-dark turquoise blue balls. Only she used the Reddit version. Thanks for that nickname, Reddit. He didn't answer but smirked the truth to me after she left. It was cheeky but cute. He's also been sharing some of that shit that he's been talking today from being saved. He has the same self-deprecating sense of humor as me. I think we are vibing. 
So that's all the updates for tonight. He's getting the rest of my attention. Keep sending me those good vibes and peace, people. Love it. Edit six. Last and final update because you guys are not letting up. I know this may seem weird since I posted the whole situation out in the cyberspace for everyone to see, but yesterday it was just a comical story about a guy I didn't think I would ever see again. Something funny to share when we all giggle. Today, well, it feels different to talk about him now that we've spent some time together. I like him. Wow. There's chemistry and similar interests and we have plans to see each other again. We don't need the pressure of Reddit to help me screw things up. You guys know I'm a bit of an expert in that regard. That's all. So go do something you love and find a way to at least balance the doom scrolling with some belly laughs. Sending much love to you all. There's one last one. All right. She lied. Update seven. Updates. You people creep. You people keep screaming over three weeks later. Don't you have better things to do than pester me about my love life? Ha. Huh. The merman, the frog prince, the dashing man from the depths, the king of the shadow realm, and many other nicknames that Reddit has bestowed is still very much in my life. He's better than I can describe with my mortal words. Fangirl him if you must, because I will understand. Thank you all for the well wishes and positivity that this post has given. I hope something amazing and magical happens to each of you. And if it happens to be shamefully funny, I hope you will share because we all need as many laughs as we can get. Be safe, everyone. I love it. It's probably one of the coolest stories, like people meeting stories I've ever heard. Oh, just wait till my next one. <laughs> you think you can beat that? Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. Because I can just picture him floating up from diving just like. I know. Like, <laughs> and it's like, what is that? But, I know. It's amazing. I read this one and I was like, oh my God, love does exist. Like, I obviously know it from us, but. But of the ways to meet, like. <laughs> it's just so cute. I thought we met in a cool way, but this is just. This is another wild. level. I know. This is like the most epic story you can tell like your kids or your family how you met. Yeah. It's and then you so can make cute. a Disney film out of it. And instead of her like being worried about him. She like pretends to be worried and runs out all magically and like, I'll save you. Yeah. And then it's just like true love at first sight. Turn it right into a movie. This could be a movie. Yeah. This it could be a that movie. Is true. It reminds me of like um almost like the notebook or something, like Nicholas Sparks style book where you meet happened, in some random weird happened way. Happened to meet in this town over summer that they're both visiting and working. It's so cute. That's funny. Top comment on this one. I feel like there are probably easier ways to get a guy. A plus for effort. <laughs> yeah, but no better story to tell. I know. OP responds back. So what you are saying is that being spectacularly stupid is not going to help me pull? I think it's funny. She seems pretty cool, though. Just the way she writes, even. Yeah. So, so, like... Sure, like sure of herself, but yet the self-deprecating humor and just like I think that shows confidence, though. I yeah, it's really it's really cool. I love this story, I absolutely love it. Okay, I found this one that just kind of is a good vibe, and I think it's funny, Let's go. and it, it'll break up the the hopeless romantic vibe. Okay, cool. Okay, so it's from a subreddit, too afraid to ask, and it's titled, "Why am I too attracted to my wife?" I know this sounds weird, but I've been with my wife for about 10 years, eight years dating and almost two married. I have always found her beautiful and super hot, but lately, these last few months, I'm obsessing over her. I feel like she's way too hot. I can't stop staring at her when we're in the same room. Is this normal? Do I need to do something? I tried looking online for help, but there isn't anything out there. I have no friends or family to ask about this. Like almost- Where's the problem? I know. Isn't it's this so like the cute. goal of life? <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Eight, ten years. Eight years dating, two married. So yeah, ten years. Okay, yeah. You're supposed to be obsessed. Uh, I love that though. It's just I don't know. I know. It's just like it's the, I'm glad it's the it's problem posted, you want to have. Yeah. It's like the best type of problem. Right. Yeah. So what's my problem? Uh I don't know. You probably figured out how to do what a lot of people can't. He was just too afraid to ask. He's yeah. scared. He's like, am I, am I something wrong with me? But I feel like it's always the opposite. Like, oh, I'm not attracted to anymore. Oh, I'm doing this. But mm -hmm. this is like, I'm too attracted. Which is probably why he was scared. 
Because I think there is kind of this fear that as you grow or as you, you know, move forward in life that you're going to lose connection with your partner or you're not going to be attracted to them or blah, blah, blah. Like, I think that is kind of a common thing. Mm -hmm. So he's probably like, wait, am I good? Like, you good, bro? And he just needs a little... Right, it's not like in an over overprotective or weirdly obsessive way. It's just like I don't know. Yeah, it's happy, good. It's it's. I'm telling you, this is a feel good vibe episode. I'm feeling it. There were no comments or anything on the last one. So the post ended up getting 12.2k upvotes. Wow. Top comment. No need to worry. I've done the same thing over my 26 year marriage. Some years it's there. Some years it's normal attraction. And then he replies. <laughs> Some years. OP replies back. I hope this is the true answer. Yeah. <laughs> Someone goes, it is. Going on eight years married after five years of dating. My wife is a hot piece and I watch her sleep 60% of the time, all the time. It's the best. <laughs> a lady like that deserves a special cologne. It's illegal in nine countries. Wow. This is the way. Every day I love my husband, but sometimes I want to just jump his bones. I don't know why. And we don't ask questions. Someone goes, it might not be normal, but it's brilliant. Yeah. Someone goes, you do need to do something. Count your blessings, dot, dot, dot. Truth. And then OP replies back, she's the best blessing I can count on. (laughs) Someone goes, she sure is. Congrats, man. You picked a winner. Very good. You can't be too attracted to your wife. I've been married for... I've been married to mine for 21 years, and I still look at her in the way you have just described. And OP responds, early years, it wasn't hard for me to control myself and not bug her all the time about fun time. But lately, I can't stop thinking about fun time with her because of how insanely hot she's becoming in my mind. It kind of feels like when I was 13 and seeing Elizabeth Hurley on screen. (laughs) I mean, I think there's an element to where the deeper you get into a relationship, Mm-hmm. You keep, I feel like, at least the way I visualize it, is you keep unlocking different parts of that person. Like you keep learning new things, you discover new things, even after so much time, you can still find other things where it just boosts your attraction even more. Mm-hmm. And it takes time to do that. But I don't know, I feel like there's so much hype around there being this honeymoon phase, and then you've kind of learned everything, you know them, you figured it all out, but it's really not true. I still feel like the honeymoon phase is, sure, it's like when it's new and fresh and exciting, but I feel like when you find the right person, that never really ends. Yeah, I think you're constantly learning and seeing new sides of your partner. And like, yeah, it changes from being this new whole thing, but I think you get to a point where there still can be new things all the time. Yeah, definitely. give you this exact feeling. This feeling. Well, because you're, you're, I mean, you should constantly be growing and not like necessarily growing away from your partner, but like just growing together and like becoming the best versions of yourself you can be. And so like always keeping up with like your self-care and hobbies and personal growth is so important. So, yeah. Yeah. I I agree. That was a good one. I know. It's like, it was short and sweet, but like, it's just amazing to see those those types of things. Okay, so this next one is, it might top the merman story. All right, let's see. Okay, so the title is, very cute guy, 30, who works at City Recycling Center, used address from Amazon box to return my grandmother's ring. I want to ask him to coffee. Sister says this is how, quote, dumb girls disappear. (laughs) There's a lot of backstory here. But I have a ring that was my grandmother's engagement ring from her high school sweetheart who was killed in Korea before they got married. She says I was the only person she ever told the story to out of respect for my grandpa, but she still treasured the ring and the boyfriend's memory, and she wanted me to have it. About a month ago, I just lost the ring. As in, it was on my bathroom counter one minute, and the next, it was gone. I tore my house apart with no sign and was super depressed and figured it must have gone down the sink or I vacuumed it or something. Well, this past weekend, I get a knock on my door, which literally never happens anymore. The guy was very nervous and very nice and 
really cute too. (laughs) And he asked if I was Alyssa X. And I said, yes. He said he really didn't know how appropriate this was, but he was a supervising civil engineer at our city recycling center. And about a month ago, one of the sorters found a ring in an Amazon box and gave him the box and the ring. He said he tried to contact me via phone and social media for a couple of weeks. I deleted all of it due to a bad breakup. Oh. Thought about mailing the ring, but didn't want it to get lost. So after thinking on it for a week, he decided to hand deliver it to the address on the box and hope it worked. Love it. I immediately busted into tears when I saw the ring and I only got his first name. I think I told him thank you, and I think he said that it made him very happy, his plan worked, and he would let me have my moment and left. I cried for a good hour, just staring at the ring, amazed at how lucky I was. I started to feel bad. I blew the guy off, so I did some social media sleuthing and found his Instagram. I created a new account and sent him a message thanking him. He has not responded, so I don't think he's very active. I found out where he works and I want to surprise him and ask him to dinner or coffee or drinks as a way of saying thank you. Yes, in my heart I'm thinking this is how great romance stories start, but my brain really is thankful he went through all the trouble. When I told my sister about my plan, she absolutely said I was being an idiot. She said it was nice the guy returned the ring, but his behavior is so sus. She said I have no idea who this guy is. All we know is that he, quote, stalked my address from an Amazon box, which is probably massively against the rules of his job. She says, instead of being a great romance, it's how dumb girls end up dead in a ditch. What do you guys think about this? Um, I don't know where that perspective is really coming from I in this case. I would be so case. thankful. What the, what the heck, sister? Yeah, it, come on. Like, sure, if someone randomly showed up and said, oh, there was, like, this random, you know, something that probably could be garbage, but maybe not, Mm -hmm. something that just didn't matter, and they were like, I found it in this box with your address, then it would be kind of like, hmm, maybe not. But with the ring or with something like this, different story. Totally different story. And then he left, like... I know. You'd think if he wanted to, like, or if he would have... You know, whatever deceptive way you could, you know, think about this. If that would have been the case for him, he probably wouldn't have just like taken her off, taken I off found and your given. Ring. Meet yeah. me at da, 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 da. Yeah, he definitely would have like hung around and like waited for her to stop crying. No, he, he like, wanted to like make sure it got there, which I feel like is something I would do. I yeah. feel like I would do something like that where it's like you find something because you know what it's like to lose something like that. Oh, my God. And just to make sure it gets there. Yeah. I hate putting stuff in the mail. I don't trust the Anything mail. of like importance. Yeah, no, I, it's, hard to, it's hard to put a lot of like faith in like packages getting somewhere safely no matter what service provider. So. But I love it. I, mean, I, I think it's amazing. And it, it makes is. me feel good that they sort these things so heavily because I take the time and care to really – like even when I get the little – uh, plastic things of sauce from restaurants, like when we take out. I know, you wash them out. I'll wash them out and put them in there. So it's so good to know that people actually truly go through and sort and that I'm at least helping a little bit. Yeah, you're you're a very good recycler. I learned it from you. <laughs> I'm a little bit psycho with my recycling. Um, but I think that just goes to show how that is truly – act from the universe like that is fate that is meant to be because I have seen a lot of um, videos on TikTok from recycling people like people that work in recycling plants and go through stuff and they always say like don't recycle your or like don't put your recycling in garbage bags or plastic bags it's not recycling like "Mm, don't do that so I know people go through it but I'm like the attention to detail to find a ring that to me just seems like absurd like it truly is fake. I know you think it'd just be box toss, like next thing. Like you'd be going through so mm-hmm. much stuff. Yeah, just slice it, break it down, squish it, put it in a compactor. And then for the ring to also have ended up in a box with an address attached to it. Exactly. That's And it is the right box. Yeah. That's crazy. It didn't fall out when it went from her bin to the truck, to the truck dumping it out in the recycling plant. To the plant, sorter. To the sorter. Like it's a ring. It's... It's a tiny little ring. Like, it, it's unreal. You would. Oh, it's so easy to lose. Hence, I lost 
two of them. Well, not so meticulous they're being, though. Because, like, it could be another piece of cardboard in there or plastic or, or something. Or it's the universe. It's fate. I'm with that. Uh, so top comment. It would never work. He works in recycling, and you're the kind of person who doesn't break down cardboard boxes before recycling. <laughs> yeah, I did think about that a little bit. <laughs> Someone goes, that's probably why he didn't respond on social media. Uh, someone goes, I mean, at this point, he already knows where you live. If he's a serial killer, you're kind of fucked whether you ask him out or not. Just don't make the mistake of thinking this is some great romance because you had a meet cute. Maybe he's a good guy. Maybe he's not. Or maybe he is a good guy, but not right for you. Or maybe he's married slash has a long-term girlfriend. Truth. Maybe he's gay. You know nothing about him. That doesn't mean you can't try to get to know him, but don't pin all your hopes on it. True. That's very real. Someone goes, when I started reading your comment, I thought, whoa, whoa, whoa. Kind of dark. But I thought for a second, yeah, they're right. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, like, it's not killing the hope, but it's just being realistic. I know, but like, fuck, let the girl live. Let her find out if he's married first, and then she can, you know, rationalize everything. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. don't, don't, sh don't kill it yet. Don't snuff it out yet. <laughs> <sighs> Someone goes, one, I think your sister is a bit paranoid. Two, yes. I wouldn't recommend calling or showing up at his place of work to ask for a date. You already sent him a message on social media, and you know it's the right one because he reached out first when trying to find you. I would just wait for him to respond, and if he doesn't ever respond, that is also a response. Just give it time. True. Okay, I don't like all these Debbie Downers. Let's get back to the update. Nice. I was just about to ask. Okay. Edit, so many comments. I wish I could reply to all of them, but you guys are so nice. Honestly, I was worried Reddit would rip me apart for being a romantic, but everyone is so nice. Yeah. One of the most common questions from the last post was how did the ring end up in the box? I honestly don't know. The ring was on my bathroom counter because I take it off to wash my face, and to me, it just disappeared. The Amazon box was one that my face wash comes in, but I swear I'd put it in the bin before I washed my face that night. I really just don't know. I'm on mobile, so I'll link the original in just a second, but basically I had a ring with very special history given to me by my grandma. Maybe a month ago, I lost it. Last weekend, a guy showed up at my door with the ring saying he worked at their city recycling center, and a ring was found in it in an Amazon box, and he wanted to see if the address maybe had the owner to the ring. Okay, really quick. Yes. That adds a whole new element that I didn't really think about. If the ring was on the sink or something, and then you have like your garbage right there in yeah. your bathroom. Now oh. now we're adding the element of the ring falling into a box that's in the garbage that then you probably put in the recycling. Yeah. Like, or even just falling down the sink. I know, but it literally fell into the box, not just into like the mess of everything. I'm telling you, there was some fate, <laughs> there was some but, fate fairies working on well, this Well, fine, one. but then if it's fate, it was fate that the ring got lost in the first place then. Yeah. And then ended up falling into that to go through this whole process. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, this is, this is something. All right, let's see. I felt bad that I barely thanked him, but to be totally honest, found him very cute and very sweet and thought about asking him out. I found him on social media and my sister said I was being an idiot. So the top few comments said that I should do something nice for everyone at the center because he didn't find the ring. He just returned it. And if there was a romantic interest there, it would work itself out. I decided to do this. I decided to do this and called the center and asked if I could bring them coffee and bagels one morning. The lady was very nice and said, of course, but wanted to know why. I didn't want to get anyone in trouble, so I said, a few of your employees did something very nice for me and I just wanted to say thanks. She then said something like, oh, I think I know who you are, <laughs> which I took to mean that maybe this guy had been talking about me and my heart jumped. She told me how I could do it, so Friday morning, I got four baker's dozen cream cheese, and coffees, and brought it down. They were very thankful, but sadly, the guy who brought my ring wasn't there. Uh. The lady who I had spoken to on the phone was like the sweet grandmotherly type, and she said that she insisted I give her my number so the supervisor could call and thank me. I kind of got the idea she was up to something, but couldn't put my finger on it. I left thinking that I'd done a nice thing to repay a nice thing, and maybe I might see the guy again. But if not, at least I tried. There you go. So later in the afternoon, I got a text saying this was Brian, and he remembered me from the ring and said I made his office and sorters very happy with the bagels. My heart jumped through my throat. I was so excited. 
We texted back and forth, and I explained why the ring meant so much to me. He explained that the ladies in his office are always trying to set him up on dates and was sorry if they had embarrassed me. No way. I said no way and told him I would love to buy him dinner to thank him specifically. He said he would be happy to meet too. We agreed to meet for an early dinner between our works. Literally hit it off the bat immediately. He's so cute and funny, but shy at the same time. As we were talking, my dumb, overly romantic brain couldn't help but think I had this ring from a family secret my grandma had given me that fate must have made me lose just so this perfect guy could find it and come into my life. Yes, I'm very dorky, romantic like that. Probably why my sister was telling me to be careful. He checks all my boxes. He's the fun uncle, so I know he's good with kids. He's got a master's degree, so I know he's smart. He's in the Marines part-time. He's athletic. He's handsome and was so kind and polite to all our serving staff. Such a big one for me. Wow. He didn't fuss over me paying for dinner, and he wasn't overly forward when we said goodbye. Because honestly, I would have gone home with him had he asked. Wow. The one thing Let's that go. gives me... <laughs> The one thing that gives me pause is that he's 31, I'm 23, and always was pretty critical of people who have significant age differences, and eight years is a lot. We texted all day Saturday, and I would have gone out with him again, but he had plans. He asked if I wanted to do something on Sunday, so yesterday we spent the day with him teaching me how to do stand-up paddleboarding. Nice. It was so fun, and seeing him without a shirt and muscles flexing while paddling... Yeah, ovaries were on fire. <laughs> After we were done, he asked me if I wanted to get takeout and come to his house and watch a football game. I said, yes, of course, but wanted to shower. He said I could shower at his place. I said I wanted to get clean clothes, and he said if I was comfortable with it, I could wear one of his hoodies and pajama pants. And I was like, oh, my God, buddy, you just opened a door I'm not sure you're ready for, <laughs> and yes, I'll steal your best hoodie on the second date. We ended up talking through the entire game, I kept thinking he would try something, but he was so shy and sweet the entire time. I did tell him that I had to kiss him on the cheek as I was leaving because he had shown me such a great time. I think that relieved a lot of the pressure because I could tell he wanted to, but wasn't sure how to go about it. Yep, yep. We agreed to get in touch and hang out later this week, and I spent the night in my bed cuddling with his hoodie, thinking really stupid things like if I should hyphenate my last name and what will name our kids. <laughs> Yes, I'm a real dork like that, but I really like this guy. Top comment. Nice to hear our relationship beginning story here for change. Thanks yeah, for that. True. Yeah, because most of Reddit relationship advice is dump his ass. <laughs> I know. I don't, I honestly don't know which movie script I'd pick. I know. I think I'd go with this one. It is pretty good. Wow. I know. My dad, I don't know if you guys can hear him in the background. My dad is sitting here on the couch staring at us and he's piping up quite a bit with his <laughs> with his take already. Top comment, or one of the top comments, I should say. Back in the day, I was really shy with women. After getting rejected by someone I really liked, I took myself out of the game. However, when my wife and I met, she asked me out. And the ovaries on fire thing is so cute because she said something similar after we got serious. Uterus about to explode when she first saw me. After wow. a couple of dates, she asked if I would help her sorority with a car wash. And she says, to this day, when I took my shirt off, she had to marry me. Not to mention, fight off her sorority sisters, LOL. She even talked with her best friend about how we would make such cute babies. I'm a career Marine, by the way. This was almost 40 years ago. I love this story. Nice. Go for it. Yeah, we need more of these. This is good. This is so this is good. good. Uh, so good. Great story. Uh, someone goes, the update I wanted but never thought would happen. True. I know. God, True. he could have been married. He could have been gay. He could have just been uninterested in her. Well, and just the back and forth of going there and he's not there when you go to bring the donuts. When, yes, I know. you do want to think. Like, I think it is important to thank all those people Especially who are part of it. Yeah, because someone else found it. But in the back of your head, you're really like, also going to see him and try and mm -hmm. like see if something's there. Yeah. Which I love that the um it felt like the whole staff was in on it. Oh, the little secretary trying to be like, let me get your number and I'll have the supervisor call you. I know. She was trying to do it on purpose. <laughs> 
And he even admitted that. He said, like, the ladies in my office are always trying to set me up. I know. It's great. Oh, it's so amazing. It seems like a really nice, chill guy. Just innocent. Yep. I love it. Well, I think we have time for one more before I have to drop you off at the shuttle. So I have this one that isn't our, like, it's not a standard good vibe, but I think it's just kind of like a funny holiday thing because I know a lot of people have had like difficult holidays with family, friends, in-laws, siblings, like whatever it may be. So I think this is kind of just like a funny holiday one that's kind of like karma. Yeah. All right. um, so for me, it's a good vibe, but we'll we'll see what you all think. So it's from Am I the Asshole, our favorite. Am I the Asshole for ruining Thanksgiving? I, 30 female, met my boyfriend, 30 male, three years ago. Before me, he was together with his high school sweetheart. They fell out of love and broke up. A year later, we started dating. His mom, however, was still heartbroken about it. I was very understanding and thought she needed time to get to know me. I was very understanding and thought she just needed time to get to know me. The ex basically grew up with them, and they saw her as a part of the family. For the first year of my relationship, his mom would call me by ex's name until boyfriend got angry Mm. once and told her to be nice. Oh, on purpose? Oh, okay. She laughed it off and said it was just a habit. After that, she started calling me the wrong name, Janet instead of Jenny, fictional names for the story. I corrected her a couple of times, but she seemed to like hurting me, so I ignored it later. My boyfriend has two sisters, and a couple of weeks before Thanksgiving, we were invited to a barbecue at the older sister's house. I was in the kitchen with my boyfriend's mom, the sisters, and one of their husbands. The older sister then talked about how my boyfriend praised my cooking, and her husband and the mom was listening. She then said out loud, sure, why don't we let Janet make the turkey this year? The sisters giggled and looked at each other, and I said, that's a great idea. I didn't tell my boyfriend what happened. On Thanksgiving, we went to his mom's house with the usual wine and dessert. She was shocked. Everybody was shocked. I said, what? I thought Janet was bringing the turkey. There was yelling, crying, and then we got kicked out. My boyfriend is so angry with me, he hasn't talked to me since. I think it's over, to be honest. But I still don't think I did anything wrong. Did I? What? <laughs> She showed up no, I know, without but... the turkey because the mom has been calling her the wrong name. Her name is Jenny, and so the mom's been calling her Janet. Oh, so she was actually serious, like, you can make it this year. Yeah. Okay. But, like, called her the wrong name, so she was like, okay, well, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Janet makes it. Kind of with it. I think it's, like... Kind of with it. Kind It's, like, this karmic justice where it's, like, if you're going to keep disrespecting me like this... And she knows. After, no, that's so blatant. After a year of being around someone, you know their name. Come on. You're just trying to be a petty bitch. So it's karmic justice. Like, she didn't deserve a turkey. Well, it, God, it's just like, it just makes you not, just so blatantly obvious with that. Yeah. Like, every single time. Yeah, I'm surprised she's still there. I don't know. Well, she does give an update. And the boyfriend was, like, really mad at her and, like, ghosted her for a couple weeks. Which also, too, like, get your shit together. I know. Blame blame your mom who is, like, instigating all of this. Ghosted for two weeks? Yeah. So he apologized, said he wanted to work it out. But at the end of the day, she was just like, I, I deserve someone who's going to stand by me and not not yeah. ghost me for two weeks. After right. Situation aside, take the turkey thing out. A ghosting for two weeks, no matter what it is. Well, I guess, I don't know. I guess there's bad things that can happen. But yeah. if you take a petty little problem and then you're going to ghost for two weeks and come back and think that everything's going to be fine, like what world are you living in? I literally had my ex boyfriend that we did long distance do this to me. Like, you can't ghost someone for weeks and not expect them to like think you broke up. Even like a day is a lot. A couple days is absurd. And he used to do that to me every weekend. I just still can't get over the fact that it's so disrespectful. And it's just, 
Mm-mm. Yeah. You can't. You can't ignore people. Oh, my God. No, not that you're dating. Like, especially. I know. I'm going to need to do a yawn counter on the YouTube video or something for this. But, oh, yeah. You can't ignore people that you want to have a future with. That's just not how that works. Like, if you have a problem or you don't know how to deal with your emotions, then just say that, like, hey, I need a little space. I need to process my thoughts, my feelings. But I'm not ignoring you. I know. And the satisfaction of it in the moment being like, oh, Janet didn't show up with it. And, like, you're the girl and you're looking around for Janet. Yeah. Janet? Yeah, you said Janet. I would have. Oh, my God. It's so amazing. Like, that moment would have been worth worth kind of the whole thing. Oh, yeah. And you kind of are at this point, too, like, with this relationship. If, like, your boyfriend has heard his mom call you the ex-girlfriend's name, he did call her out for that, which was good. But then you know that he's not. Right. You know he knows that she's calling her the wrong name now. They interact. They're around each other, all this stuff. So it's like she knows. One, it seems like they don't have the strongest relationship in the first place because you wouldn't be this out of touch at all. Like, yeah. You wouldn't even be close. It's it's goofy. Top comment, thunderous applause. You're my favorite asshole for this. My yep. absolute hero. Yeah. Someone goes... We have got to have some kind of flair for hero asshole. This is the kind of malicious compliance I live for. Was it petty? Sure. Not anywhere near as petty as referring to someone by the wrong name for three years. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Did I miss that? I thought they were only together a year. Oh, my God. Three years ago. They've been together three years. How? Oh, my God. Okay, the one year, I, don't, I got it mixed up in my head. The one year was how long the ex and his high school sweetheart were broken up got for it. before they started dating. Got it. So also, it wasn't even a rebound. Like, it was a decent amount of time. So no excuse. And they've been together three years, and she's still calling her the wrong name. That's crazy. Oh, That's my God. too long. So way too long. I also love the term malicious compliance. I love that. Wow. That was really cool. Malicious compliance. I'm with it. Yeah, no, that's good. That's real good. Okay, well, this is where Justin leaves us. I'm putting him on a shuttle to go take it from Duluth to Brainerd, Minnesota for some quality time with his mom. Yeah. Um. So my dad will probably be hopping on for maybe a story or two. Yeah. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Excuse my yawns. Hopefully I can get a real coffee in me by the time I come back and I will. <laughs> I will be more awake, but I think these have been good so far. These, yeah. are, these are peppy and Well, it's nice. I mean, the, the wholesome up. when you're just kind of like, I mean, this is the earliest episode ever, virtually right out of bed. Ooh, yeah. And I think the wholesome's nice and nice to wake up to. I think nice it's a great, great way to end the year, too. Like, we, we've been doing this podcast. We started in February of this year. And so we haven't hit our one-year anniversary yet. But we're at the end of this year. Yeah. And so it's... It's a good way to end the year, you know, especially because we have so many crazy, dramatic, you know, gut-wrenching stories, so. I know a year ago, probably this week, you would have opened up the mics and everything. I know. Yeah, it's wild. I guess, too, if you need a little, like, hopeless romantic vibes, Justin and I just celebrated our three-year anniversary yesterday. Truth. Which is pretty crazy. It's been a minute. Yeah, that's how you know it's good, though, when it flies by. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, here's where we end off for you. Okay. Okay. Here I go. Bye. <laughs> You're popping in for a couple happy, wholesome ones. I love the happy, wholesome ones. Or good vibes. I don't know. I didn't really, I don't know what to call this it's one. It's kind of like the Beach Boys in winter, you know, you know, good, 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 good vibration. Yeah, exactly how. Did you look at our, at our vibrations outside? Uh, they can clearly see it is snowy. And clear, which, and means, which means cold, folks. Really cold. I think it was nine degrees this morning. Yeah, we're getting down to... I think negative 20 Fahrenheit this week here, so it is very cold. So this week we're coming to you from Minnesota, where normally we're in good old sunny California where it never rains, where it's raining now, and we're, we're freezing here. It's quite cold. I don't know how I survived like actually living here in these winters. It's You kind of adapt. And, and how do you feel now about uh, 
catching a plane and going back to Los Angeles. Well, I'm not catching a plane. I'm driving. Oh, you're going to... That's right. Morgan's I'm drive, driving She's back. doing a road trip. Road tripping. Okay. So f- f- keep it on with the good vibes. I thought this one was just kind of a cute, happy ending. Cheers, everybody. Am I the asshole for attending the funeral of my mother? I, 24 female, was given up by my parents as a baby because they were both 18 and had no way to properly care for me. I didn't have a very good life until I got into college off of a sports scholarship, and it was then that I decided to investigate my past. I found out that my parents were still together, that they had two other kids, a lot younger than me, and had overall become very successful in life. I started to feel very resentful, and although I almost reached out, I decided that I couldn't. I still kept tabs on them to see how they were doing, how my siblings are and stuff. When I found out that my mother died, I did attend the funeral a few weeks ago. It was a big funeral. A lot of people attended, but it wasn't packed. The thing is, other than my hair being jet black, I look just like my mother did. So when people were leaving, I got spotted by my mother's hysterical great aunt who assumed I was my mother. I excused myself, but I'm pretty sure I exposed who I was because just a few days ago, my father managed to find me and reached out to me. When we met at a coffee shop three days ago, he apologized for having given me up, not reaching out sooner, and ended up crying over not getting to raise me. It's the first time I've seen a grown man cry. He asked me if I needed anything from a car to a place to stay, but I couldn't help but feel like I was embarrassing him. So I said goodbye and left, but I've received a lot of texts and voicemails from him since then asking why I left early, if I'll meet him again. Then I got a phone call from a woman saying she was his cousin and my aunt and that I should have stayed away because he's inconsolable now and I'm an asshole for choosing a funeral to reveal myself. I feel like my aunt is right because I've because all I've done is brought him new grief after he just lost his wife. It gets it gets better. You guys don't don't worry. I, 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 I'm I'm packing in the questions. You know me. Yeah. Give me all the facts first and then then let me rip. Yep. So top comment on this original post. Not the asshole. I feel bad for you and your biological father, honestly. This is just a tough situation. Your aunt should seriously shut up. <laughs> your aunt is a typical attention seeker. I'm I'm with her on that one. Um, so OP responds, because there's just a bunch of comments about the aunts like going down the line. And OP responds, the aunt who was hysterical and confused me for my mother is in her grief is my mother's great aunt and is in her 90s. The aunt who called me is my father's cousin. They're two different women. So she just like was clarifying. Okay, so let's get to the update. So the update occurred one month later. So I'm posting this because I said I would in a month. Things happen and it's gotten better. The first thing was my aunt dad's cousin phoned me like the day after and apologized to me. She told me she practically raised my dad and seeing him like he was made her act without thinking. She told me my dad wanted to see me again and would appreciate it if I would meet her too. I told her how hurtful what she said was and I needed time before seeing her, but did agree to meet him. Fast forward a week ago to meeting my dad. I kept rereading everyone's advice and using it to prepare what to say. He was more composed. I told him it hurt me so much to be abandoned and it hurt seeing how successful he was and it made me feel not wanted and meeting him made me want to be forgotten. He told me he never forgot about me and showed me a small baby photo of me he keeps in his wallet and told me he still sees me as his baby even though I'm grown. He told me he and my mom used to cry for me every day after giving me up but they still prayed for me every day even until the end. He once again told me whatever I wanted I told him I wanted no money or anything from him and didn't intend to reveal myself. He told me it was okay if I wanted nothing to do with him, but asked if I be a part of my mom's great aunt's life as she hadn't stopped talking about me since exposing me and he gave me her address. He insisted I was always wanted, but he always thought I'd been adopted and didn't want to ruin my life. And that's something a lot of you said, so I was prepared for it. He asked me to forgive him for not being there for me and said he'd do whatever to be my dad. I guess I realized I could push him away or finally have what I wanted. I told him my teenage fantasy that he'd come to save me from the orphanage and we both started crying. He told me we can save each other and I hugged him and forgave him. Since then, I started seeing him more, visiting my great aunt every other day. She started calling me by baby nickname she had for my mom. 
My dad also started coming to the gym that me, my fiance, and my best friend started after grad. He has been trying to do all the dad stuff I missed out on that we can still do, like teaching me how to drive business advice and stuff. I also finally don't feel so upset over my siblings getting a better life than me. He also got us both into counseling, and I've finally been able to talk about all my years in the system before I aged out. He is hosting a New Year's party and asked me to come so I can meet all my relatives, cousins, and siblings. And yes, I am going. So I want to thank everybody that prepared me for how he felt in giving me up and how he felt in getting to see me again. I think that if you all hadn't pointed that out to me, I probably would have just tried to stay hidden and wouldn't have finally gotten a dad. That's called a happy ending. Yeah. I'm very pleased to hear how I that worked know. out and how she, she opened the door and allowed him to figure out how to be a dad and not... You know, maybe for whatever moronic reason he was associating being a father by just buying things to to buy that that love or open that door where all she really wanted him to do is just simply just be in my life. And neither one of them could just say that you know, from the beginning on in the easy way, saying it's not money, it's life I'd like to be able to experience. And I understand her bitterness too. I didn't know she was in an or orphanage. For all those years, I assume that she got adopted by another family. No, no different than he thought that she was. They were picked up by a, yeah. a family. No, she was in the system until she aged out at eighteen. That's that's a tough one. Yeah, and I'm sure too. Like I don't, I didn't look too much into the money thing. I, I mm -hmm. just think it's like the shock of it all, and he just feels so bad for the past that he's mm -hmm. just trying to make it right in every way possible. And it's like. Just like, what do you need? What can I? What can I do? What do you need? And I get it. Yeah, it's it's what a what a great story. And I'm glad. And and I, if you're listening to this, I'm really glad that you opened that door. And I, 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 I certainly feel confident that your lives will be embellished for the rest of your life and certainly his life. And that that's just great. And certainly for the aunt, for the great aunt. Yeah, I you know you wonder with her age if she's still you know, has the clear cognitive thinking, but yeah, and I mean, she's 95. Who, yeah, I, I got to tell you, or something like I that, know so. 95 year olds that are a hundred percent with it. You knew that Ruth, you know, aunt Ruth, if she was, her, yeah. she was cognitive till 99. She didn't, she didn't budge. Yeah. So. I mean, it's, it's a crazy story. So, I mean, I'm sure that's helping, you know, that great aunt through her grief mm -hmm. and, it's kind of, it's just crazy how it all worked out. It's, well, congratulations. I know. It's just sad that, you know, this all happened because of her the, mom's her mom funeral. Death. And that's, you know, that's that loss for her, not mm -hmm. knowing her mom and mm -hmm. growing up in the system and then never really getting that chance. I have a friend of mine that uh, <sighs> I met, you know, online uh, on a dating app <laughs> and, and, and she was adopted early on and was given up and... She, uh, I, I don't know if she really knew her mom. She met her once before she, she passed, but I do know that she was telling me about her and it was obviously a significant part of her life, even though she really didn't know this woman. Yeah. That when I went to the cemetery to visit my parents, her, her mom was, you know, she told me where her mom was and I went and found her and took a picture of her for her and sent it to her and she was very moved. It, you know, it's, there's a connection, you know, you know, you it's your mom. It's your, and even though you're not, they're not a part of your life, they stick in your head. They, you, so a lot of you that are out there certainly go through those feelings. I, I can't imagine not. Yeah. And I, I've talked about my friend, Erin, who was adopted in a past episode. And that's something, you know, she really, she really struggled with, even though her adoptive, you know, parents were so amazing. She always kind of had this mm -hmm. desire to know her birth mom. And so I think it's, you know, it's, it's something that some kids that are adopted struggle with. And then mm -hmm. others, you know, I've, I read comments on YouTube where others are like, it's never been a thought in my mind. Like, I didn't care. So everyone has their own, you know, unique experience, especially. Their own, their own dynamics. Yeah, especially with, you know, something so complex as adoption. I like that one. That was a great one. Yeah. So the comments on the update, this is really beautiful. Your dad sounds like someone that is good to have in your life. And I'm sure he's thrilled to finally have a relationship with you. And OP responds, I guess I really did misjudge a lot of the things when I first met him. He really is the dad that I wanted when I was a teenager. Someone replies, I like Maya Angelou's quote, I did then what I knew how to do. Now that I know better, I do better. I really don't think you or your father did anything wrong. Now you can both move forward in a place that you were before. Mm -hmm. And OP goes, I really like that quote. 
It'll be strange going from zero family to a big family in under two months, but I know I'll have my dad and really, really old but cute great aunt with me. And just everyone is like, congratulations. This is amazing. And and I hope her siblings are are right on top of it as well and open their arms for her. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be, you know, a shock for them, especially because they just lost their mom. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely going to be a slow process or, you know, however they take it. I'm sure it'll be the best steps for all of them. But yeah, I forgot how old the siblings were slash I don't know if she ever mentioned I didn't get that I didn't see it she's 24 um but I'm not seeing an age for the siblings so who knows how old they are I can go look in her comments and see if she ever mentioned it but I mean that they just lost their mom so it's you know it's gonna be a lot for them I'm sure and we don't know if it was if it was tragic. If, I mean, if it was an accident or or if it was an illness. We don't know the time time delays and all that and what they went through as a family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, OP does respond though. I was wondering how your life went. Did you never get adopted? Where did you grow up? And so OP responds a lot in the comments, which is why um, mm-hmm. the orphanage in the update that comment kind of maybe took us by surprise. And they go, I was never adopted. There was some near adoption stuff when I was a baby, apparently, but it never panned out no matter how far it got. How sad. And then they respond back. Um, Someone asks, sorry that happened. Did you grow up in an orphanage? They never told your biological parents what happened then? How did they give you up? And so they go, I grew up in the system and was aged out. Given the circumstances of being given up, it was easy to track down who my parents were. Apparently, they gave me up after my first birthday. Wow, which is crazy. Well, they probably felt they couldn't do it at that time, and they were and she they were struggling to even eat, and they thought it would be better for her. Who knows? It's just, I mean, everyone has their own reasons for mm-hmm. you know giving a a little one up for adoption, and you have to make the decision that's best for you. But we don't know. We it, just, it just it's it yeah. We just don't Who know. Who knows? I'm I'm sure this is something that OP has struggled with forever. It's. It's a complex, complex situation. I'm not seeing. I, there's so many comments, so be sure to check out this one. I guess. I guess that what wanna, they always say is, "Don't look back, look forward." And that's all you can do. I mean, there's no point dwelling on the past. I, I kind of live by that. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm big into move on. Yeah, Life and, is and too I, short. And I always and, say that every bad experience is teaches us good things. Yeah, you know, it she, does. In some ways. Yeah. You know, there's some things I'd rather not we didn't have wanna, gone through. We didn't have to learn or experience it, pardon me. But You uh, gotta talk in your mic. Oh thank you. But it's uh those experiences make us who we are. Yeah, there's there's definitely some I would I would take back and not go through. But yeah, happy ending. I think, you know, from the first post until the second post it was a mm-hmm. month and Judging by the comments on the first one, I think she got a lot of support and a lot of great advice that kind of had her reevaluate and was the reason she gave her dad another chance. Mm -hmm. So it just goes to show that Reddit is a powerful place and can be super, super positive for those reaching out. And a good tool. Amazing. I'm very, very happy for, for her. I hope you have another one that's that good. Okay. I think... Oh, one more. One more quickie. I think one more might might be okay. You don't let me on very often, so the fact oh, when you do uh, let me on, I, I like to you know at least get you know get some good good juice. Th- you'll be on more. You've just been busy traveling. So this one was actually a post originally on Reddit um, from the user Jacques or Jacques four eight zero one. Found an old letter sent to my mother who was struggling to make payments on my trumpet. And it's from Allegro Music Center Incorporated in Castlebury, Florida, December 17th, 2009. To Keithia Rufin, dear Mrs. Rufin, I have decided to forgive the rent on Jacques' trumpet. You do not have to pay me any more for the trumpet. It is yours to play. However, if Jacques drops out of band and stops playing the trumpet, will you return it to me so I can give it to some other deserving student? I have been through bad times like you, but remember... Tough times never last. Tough people do. Maybe you can help some other students someday when times are better. Sincerely yours, James W. Jones, president and founder. 
How wonderful. I know. There's a guy, there's a guy that understands community and, and heart of people. That's just a, a so touching that, especially, I mean, I think a lot of people now are going through tough times like this, and it's nice to see people just have these little acts of kindness and making people's lives easier and it's better. About, it's all about community and, and being a part of it. Yeah. I think what's really amazing is... On the actual Reddit post mm -hmm. that was shared, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna go find it real quick because, and we'll, and we'll give that guy one more little little boost of uh, recognition because he's he he deserves it. He's that kind of guy, and it's great to do business and and be uh, associated with people that want to give back to the community and help people and not just think of themselves. Absolutely, and that's that's what we're all about. And my whole life, it's it's been about that. Yeah, I I agree. Um, so here is the post. What was his name again? The man who donated? Yeah. James W. Jones. The company is Allegro Music Center Incorporated in Florida. We like you. The thread is amazing too. And um, the top comment on it actually is, my dad died when I was eight, and my mom couldn't afford my piano lessons anymore. My piano teacher then gave me free lessons all the way till I graduated from the Canadian Royal Conservatory of Music at 14. She was a renowned pianist and easily charged a lot for lessons, but she kept on helping us out. It was a huge contribution to my life, and I never forgot it. And I, and I wonder if he can still blow the horn and if he can go do a triple high C. Because that's a tough one. Oh, this was piano. Oh, I thought it was a, it was a trumpet that he had. That's no, but this is the top comment. Oh, okay. that's from uh, oh, okay. a p pianist. I'm still I'm still on the trump on the guy with the trumpet. <laughs> so there is a comment from the owner on the website. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to take a quick moment to say thanks for the heartwarming outpouring response to a letter written in 2009 that's found its way to Reddit recently. We have been overwhelmed with the positive response. It has been so encouraging and uplifting. You may have noticed our site went down early this morning from the mass response, but we have fixed that and will continue to try and keep up with that. We love hearing from you and your own stories that this letter has reminded you of. One thing that we have always wanted to do is have a rental scholarship fund where we could help more students access music education by either providing a free month's rent or a full school year rental based on need. This is something we will be setting up in the coming days, so stay tuned. I love it. In the meantime, one of the most impactful things you can do is visit your local music store purchase an instrument, and donate it to your local youth orchestra or a local band program. I think that's fantastic. Are you aware that a lot of these school districts around the country have cut music departments? A lot of them cut extracurriculars because they just don't have the funding. And and one of the most important things, I think, for a kid is the music department. Mm -hmm. And I was actually hearing, um, you know, one of my favorites, you know, Louis Armstrong, uh, play, playing the horn on, you know, as I was driving, and I thought to myself... I really missed the boat that I, to, I, I didn't have the discipline as a child to want to go do the practice. But if I, if, if, if I actually saw to, you know, where I could be today and taking it slow and doing the notes and the scales and working that lip, I would have loved to play the horn. Hey, it's never too late to learn. Yes. So someone commented on this post too, and they go, this is my father-in-law, guys. He is every bit as kind and selfless as this letter makes him out to be. If you are all serious about giving, I could set something up. I'm not sure what would be the most appropriate. So would be, so I would be open to suggestions. I also realized that I would have to prove that I am his son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. There is a comment, though, from OP. And I'm trying to find that because... That was a good one, too. I know. It is really good. I love, uh, I love when we focus on the good ones. <laughs> yeah, they can't all be like this. <laughs> Um, so OP goes, yes, I still have the trumpet. I'm currently teaching myself piano. The fact that they, they kept playing and still have the trumpet and it's just, I just love it. Amazing. I just love all the comments and all of these people going out of their way to teach other people music. It's just amazing. I have a story, a real, a real story for you. Okay. Let's hear it. So you were not at the family Hanukkah party last week. I was not. And Melissa, who's my niece in Los Angeles, has three children. And across the street from them is a neighbor who uh, is apparently from Russia, I think. And the grandfather comes to visit. And my uh, and the and the his grandchild is learning to play the piano. And 
my niece said, we have a piano at our house and would you like to teach you know, my daughter how, you know, how to play? And he, with his accent, said, absolutely, I'd love to help you. And they said, well, our piano isn't very good. We'll have to get it tuned. He says, you don't, don't worry. <laughs> and he said, you know, I'm going to come look at it. I, I, I can fix pianos. And sure enough, he came, he spent apparently 10 days, 10 working oh my days, gosh. tearing this piano apart piece by piece by piece, rebuilding it as he would come every day. And he wouldn't take a penny to do it. Wow. And he has been now, and she wants to pay him. I mean, she certainly has the ability of doing it. And he's he just loves teaching. He has now taken on teaching Kayla the piano on that piano. That's beautiful. And it just goes to show you people that have it in their heart and feel music, how they, what it does for them and in, in their soul, how they want to give and be, have other people share in that feeling. Mm-hmm. Nice people, great souls. Yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. Well, I don't think we can top that. I think that's just where we're going to have to end. Did you like that story? Yeah, it was good. I liked your stories. It was very cute. And everybody, tell us more of your stories. Very good wholesome vibe stories, a couple funny ones in there. Um, just, you know, we got we got this end of the year. We got to end it on a good foot. Well, happy new year to everybody, and we'll see you next year. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Be sure to check out my dad's podcast, Father Knows Something, if you want to see more of him. You can also write in. He's got his Google Forms posted on both the YouTube and his Instagram. So be sure to check that out. But We'll see you in the new year. Bye, guys.